It, it ends with the procession of the Eucharist. At the very end, we will be, the Eucharist will be let out. Normally, we would process outside. That's not happening today. Um, so we just have a very short procession. I will come down the aisle and into the gathering space across from the fire the fireplaces where we have the uh, tabernacle set up. So just please follow behind and gather in the gathering space as we adore the Blessed Sacrament at the end of Mass, and then we just depart in unbroken silence. All right? Again, thank you so much. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The day of our salvation is at hand. We enter into the great triduum, this great feast of God's love, the love of Jesus Christ that's so strong that it is to suffer and die for us and be raised from the dead. This is a celebration of God's love. And we know we do not always live up to that love, 
So let us take a few moments and acknowledge our sinfulness so as to prepare for these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper in which your only begotten Son went about to hand himself over to death and trusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of the calendar. You shall reckon in the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goat. You shall keep it until the 14th of this month. And then with the whole, whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered 
during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts in the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girth, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You should eat like those who are in flight. If the Passover, it is the Passover of the Lord, for on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the lamb, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall, 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 shall celebrate will pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, 
This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. With you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So, during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on, and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. 
The Gospel of the Lord. There are two ways to wash someone's feet. Either you lower yourself or you raise them up. In Christ, God does both of those things for us. What we read about tonight is God acting in Christ in a way which is entirely radically new, a new eruption of grace into the world, a new lowering of self, a new raising up of us. But at the same time, it's completely consistent with who God always has been and always will be for us. The readings take us back to that first Passover. And they take us back there because Jesus took his disciples back there as he celebrated this Passover supper with them. In fact, in a way, Jesus didn't really need to take his disciples back there. They were faithful Jews, and as faithful Jews have been doing for centuries in that time and still today, they celebrated Passover. They remembered They remembered what God had done for them. They remembered the blood on the lintel, and they remembered the parting of the Red Sea. The blood on the lintel, which marked for the angel of death to pass over, to not mete out death to this house. Blood was not just a conveniently brightly colored substance because the angel was too dim to notice anything else. Blood is life. Blood is God's great gift to animal and human life. And God consented to let that symbol of his gift, of his sharing, of his own liveliness with us stand as the symbol that he willed salvation for his people. That through that sacrifice, the twelfth plague would not be visited upon them. That they would be able to leave Egypt and come to the Red Sea. And then, at the Red Sea, God parted the waters so as they could begin that long walk from slavery into freedom. God opened the way and made the journey possible for them, and then they had to walk that way. It was hard at times. Jesus took his disciples back to that, as on this night, he would do something radically new with blood and radically new with water. That those things would be consistent with how God has always acted and will always act for his people. If the blood of lambs had set them free from danger for one night, now we see a new gift. Now we see Christ saying that his blood would offer them so much greater, so much longer lasting a freedom In that, there's a lowering. God in Christ lowering himself, saying yes, 
his life, his blood would be shed, that we might be free. And in that, there is a raising. There is a saying, see, see how much I love you. And don't just see, taste how much I love you. And loved people love. In that extravagant display and sharing of love, we are raised. We are transformed to live lives that come closer and closer to that love that God is. And then comes the washing of the feet. When again, Christ acts in complete continuity with God's action and still does something new. When he lowers himself and raises us. At the Red Sea, God has parted the waters. God said, you don't need to be scared of the waters. I'll take the waters away so you can walk. And on this night, Christ says something different. Christ says, I'll bring the water close to you. I'll bring this water close and tender and wash. So we would not just see how much God loves us. We would not just taste how much God loves us. We would feel it trickle down our toes wash us clean of all that detritus that prevents us from being the people we dream to be, that God dreams for us to be. And his lowering is clear. He removes his garment. He bends down. He comes face to face with that which is unpresentable, with that which is smelly, and washes. And he raises, too. The venerable bead has a beautiful reflection on the towel that Jesus took up at that moment. And he invites us to think about the person, likely a woman, who weaved it. He invites us to think about the time and energy and expertise and care she put into creating that towel. And he says, and I'm going to have to take him as his, as his word at this because I know nothing about weaving, there's actually more work to weave the kind of rough, absorbent fabric that makes a good towel than to weave the smooth fabric that m- makes most clothing. The making of those little loops that aren't uneven that aren't flat, actually takes more work, is more demanding, asks more of her fingers, of her back, of her eyesight. And Christ takes up that towel. He brings it close to himself. He raises it, and he dignifies it, First, by using it for its purpose. And by using it for so much more. By making it a symbol, a full, visible, palpable, drying, strong, resoundant symbol of how everything, everything in our life that we weave, everything in our life that we work, that we put our sacrifice into, he will take up, he will dignify, and he will use to show the world how much he loves us. He raises the towel, and he raises us. Because then he says it in words. If they haven't got it, He makes it clear, 
as I have done for you, you also should do. Beloved people, love. Feel that water trickling down our toes. Feel the detritus being washed off. Taste the blood. Encounter that love. And be raised up to love. To begin that journey, that hard journey, that long walk into freedom, that long walk to that glory where no sin will take away our joy, where no sin will stop us from loving, where no jealousy, no fear, no lust, no nothing will have power to keep us from rejoicing and loving. To take us to that point where only God's power will reign, the power that lowers itself, the power that raises us up.
Stand now and bring our prayers before our Lord, our God. For the church, for all who are baptized, that we may live as models of humility and service for all people. Pray to the Lord. For all leaders around the world, that they may be humble servants, always working to promote peace and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people everywhere, that they may know God's mercy through the help and service of Jesus' disciples today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those 
individuals, organizations, and institutions dedicated to serving others, especially first responders and medical personnel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those preparing for the Easter sacraments of initiation, particularly the Stonehill students preparing for confirmation here at the Chapel of Mary on April 21st. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and lay ministry in the church, especially in the Congregation of Holy Cross, and for Deacon Ryan Kerr and his seven classmates who will be ordained priests at Notre Dame next weekend. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill in body, mind, or spirit, that they may feel the healing touch of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our for all those who have died among our families, friends, and in the Stonehill community, that they may inherit eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers inscribed in our book of petition, and for those prayers we hold within the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we bring these prayers to you in confidence because we bring them in the name of your Son. Grant them through Christ our Lord. the oil of catechumens. May all the catechumens called to baptism in Christ be strengthened through this holy anointing to resist Satan and reject evil in all its form through this oil as they prepare for the saving power of baptism. sick. May the sick who are anointed with this oil experience the compassion of Christ and his saving love in body and soul. Through anointing with this preferred chrism, may children and adults who are baptized and confirmed and presbyters who are ordained experience the gracious gift of the Holy Spirit.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Andre Bisset, blessed Basil Moreau, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to conform in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edgar, our Bishop, the Order of Bishop, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom we have summoned before you, and you compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord, and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Bless those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever.